My guest today is Connie Shulman. She plays Yoga Jones on the award-winning Netflix series Orange is the New Black. Connie first came on the scene when she appeared in the play Steel Magnolias and took the New York theater scene by storm. She then was cast in roles in movies like Men Don't Leave and Fried Green Tomatoes. She was a regular cast member on the ABC sitcom The Faculty. And she came into all of our homes originally as the voice of Patty Mayonnaise in the award-winning cartoon Doug. My old friend Connie Shulman is in the podcast clubhouse right now. I can't even believe it. If this is what it took to have a cup of coffee with you, I should have started doing this a long time ago. I'm so happy to see you. I'm really happy to see you. I think the thing that happened, and I think this is true of you and me and a lot of us who had kids around the same time, is that you go into, like, you have your life, you're together all the time, you're, like, going to exercise class together and having a coffee and laughing and going, you know, to paint pottery. And then the next thing you know, 15 years have passed and... Yeah, you you sort of go under. A little you, bit. You disappear. You particularly yeah. went under. I think the last time I called you, you, Ephraim, was a little, little baby and I called, and your husband, the magnificent actor Reed Burney, who will have to get on the show really soon because listeners have been asking, when is he coming on? How many listeners? Reed. Your, Reed listening. Your, your cousin uh, from Tennessee <laughs> and Reed's uh, <laughs> high school drama teacher. But I called to ask you something, and Reed was like, Connie, Alana's on the phone. And you're like, I can't get on the phone. Ephraim, mm. what? I'm giving him dinner. And that was 15 years ago. So Still doing he it. He had dinner. Mm. But I feel mm. like, um, well, what I want to share with everyone is Connie, when I met her, we were in acting class together. She was uh, truly one of the most uniquely special performers I had seen, worked with, and had the um, luck and good fortune of being in class Sweet. with together. And... I think maybe the first thing I remember you doing was Steel Magnolias, the play. Right. You did other things, but sort of the thing that I was like, oh, she's on her way. Like, this is a real thing, a real production. You were wonderful in it. It got great reviews, and it really sort of started your reputation and career as a theater actress in New York City. Is that your recollection? Yes. No, no, that's exactly right. I came out from Tennessee and went to a conservatory here for a couple of years. And then, you know, you're finished and you're sort of like, okay, what do I do now? And you do, at that point, it was a lot of temp jobs. People actually typed. Did you have any typed. crazy, weird jobs when I you did. first started? I did. So I worked for a temp agency and got sent to, oh gosh, what's the name of that magazine? It wasn't Playboy. It was, oh my gosh, Penthouse. Okay. Penthouse. So I was working in the editing department at Penthouse, <laughs> like editing people's like fantasy dream letters. They would write into Penthouse. It was a little magazine called Forum that had just like people's fantasies. And I was working with this like complete weirdo woman. You were like, um, this is terrible grammar. Uh, I, I believe this, after, <laughs> after you, you were on all fours, comma... <laughs> <laughs> it was gross. And I actually recognized it was a girl from Johnson City, Tennessee, where I'm from her Wait, letter. And because... that's when it was time to go. Okay. Is what it was. Right. But that was sort of, yeah. That, that was, was a strong sign from the gods. That it was time to try to hit the stage a little bit longer. But so, um, yeah, so I had done this showcase. Like actors, I, I think they still do them. Like you pay <laughs> to do these scenes that right. casting people maybe will come to. So I did one of those, and actually uh, an agent came. It was a commercial agent. And I went into their office. They called me in. And the day that I got called in, the breakdown for Steel Magnolias was on somebody's desk. And I sort of was walking through the office and must have been talking to somebody. Right. And they were like, oh, that, that girl seems like somebody that should be going in for this. Right. So it was being completely in the right place at the right That's time. That's amazing. I feel like uh, that has been a little bit of the story of your career to a certain degree. Because 
the next big milestone that people know you for, certainly recognize your voice from, was the cartoon Doug, which had, you know, a huge presence in the 90s. And if I recall, you were in an aerobics class with the wife of the creator. (laughs) Were you in that class with me? Yes, although I went You and Helen Hunt, Mary Tyler Moore. It was the weirdest group. People, and Pia Zadora. It was straight. It was getting straight. And Helen Keller, <laughs> Helen Keller was in there. She taught it. Oh she my god! That class. No, stop. The woman that did teach us. She later, like fifteen years later, she was like a mother at one of my kids' schools. So you know, six degrees of separation. From right. So for all class. of us, I think to be perfectly honest, that class was in nineteen ninety three, maybe, and I think that's the last time I've exercised. <laughs> Well, so you, could, you couldn't tell, but we're on radio. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, so she was an aerobics teacher. And what happened, I had done a series of mayonnaise commercials. It was like, welcome back to Mayo was the little catch line thing. And her husband, Jim Jenkins, who worked for Jumbo Pictures, was looking to cast this this animated series that he was doing. And... He said, my commercial came on TV, and he said, that's the voice I want for this character. And she's like, oh, my gosh, that woman is in my exercise class, front row, white leotard, every Wednesday. <laughs> you should see her <laughs> leap and... Anyway. I mean, it was gross right. what I was doing. But <laughs> she came up to me and said, you know, would you mind? And at that point... It was seriously going to their apartment, and he had a little tape recorder, and that's how it started. And he recorded me reading a couple of things. And, you know, you like, okay, nothing's going to happen there. Right, and but that was a really long-lasting. fantastic. The thing about that cartoon, first of all, I don't think it's on anymore. Is it on, like, Nicola? What, it was, it's on it? at Nick at Night. Okay. Like, they did a whole sort of resurgence of all of those Rugrats and okay. Doug. I mean, I know you can of... also go to YouTube and, and see oh, yeah, them yeah, there. Yeah. But the thing that I thought was sort of remarkable, remarkable I'm going to say that drinking. again. She's the, drinking. The, the thing about a podcast is you can drink. <laughs> Which... <laughs> She's doing right now. Um, it sort of reminded me a little bit of the Peanuts gang in terms of Doug being this character mm-hmm. and Patty Mayonnaise, who you played, sort of reminded me of Lucy Van Pelt. And there yep. was this dynamic of him having this endless crush on this character. Yeah, definitely and, a little Charlie Brown character and um, with sidekicks. Absolutely. That's exactly what it was. Why do you think that cartoon, what was it about it that reach and maybe this is a good time to introduce the fact that connie also plays yoga jones uh, a character on the really popular show that has taken the world by storm called orange is the new black and i recently saw a mashup where they took yeah patty man <laughs> yoga jones and had sort of like that lunchroom table conversation right. between doug and yoga jones and it's actually hilarious it's very well done so you really must feel fun. like well i've made it like i'm a mashup I, I suppose so. You know, I've had the strangest, I don't know, the strangest career. And I think there's just been, I've been really fortunate that the things that I've actually done have been these sort of, um, I don't know, they, they've they left a really large impact. And um, they're few and far between but because I took 15 years off so to raise my kids. So let's talk about You so. were working and then you got pregnant with your first child. Right. And you sort of decided to take attachment parenting to a new level. <laughs> Which is, that is don't, so... call back, don't call back your friend. Don't attach to anyone except your kids. No, That's but in really all seriousness, and I use the term attachment parenting, and, you know. No, but you're absolutely, you're, there's some, you're right. There's a little bit of truth to it, but mostly I think you were someone who really wanted your kids and loved being with them and actually found yourself completely consumed happily yeah. and were fortunate enough. Everyone, there are a lot of people who might like to do that and might not have the luxury of being able to do that because sure financially that's not something they could do but the fact that you were able to make that work is amazing and so we'll talk more about that but the idea that you called me a couple of years ago and you're like you know what I think I want to try this again and I was like oh that's adorable Connie wants to dip her toe back in the water maybe she'll get a voiceover for you know clearer so <laughs> and the next thing I know it's like 
Connie Shulman is the new star of Orange is the New Black. Can you tell me about the audition process for Yoga Jones and how this right. came together? Well, um, okay, so it had been a really long time since I had auditioned for anything. And my kids were starting to become actors, and I was taking them on some things. And I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if there's anybody out there that remembers me. You know, so I was trying to dig up an agent. Did you go door to door like, hi, can I have it like was, a Jehovah's it was Witness? Almost, it was, it was <laughs> almost like that. Can I leave some information? <laughs> it was it was seriously looking through like a Rolodex. I think mm-hmm. we actually had one. And I'm looking through there and the I had pages. like I'm like, I have an old friend who now sort of worked his way up, now runs his own agency. So I, you know, I did the thing where I called him. I said, I want to pick your brain. I go to lunch. I basically begged him to sort of just keep an eye out for something that might be right for you. You know, he said, look, Connie, headshots are now in color. You might want to update. Everything's done online. What? You know, it was sort of like he was bringing me up 15 years into technology because I had You're like, you're like Brie Larson. You've been in a room. You've been in a (laughs) room. I was in the crib with my son, Ephraim, for 15 years. So then he sort of updated me. I pestered him for about two months. He said, what's going on? It was the second audition I had. He said, here, something's come in. It's a yoga teacher. Netflix is had just started Netflix what they were doing. Netflix is on your computer. He explained to you what Netflix was. He was you know, Netflix right. to us was getting the movies in the mail. Right. And never finding them or turning them back in. And so... You know, he sort of explained to me what that was. And then I went in for this yoga teacher. And what I remember was that the sides were remarkable. Uh It was beautiful writing. Uh Like you knew right away. I mean, even I knew that after not having auditioned for a long time. Having not read for 15 years. I mean, you know, some Dr. Seuss maybe. But this was like, yeah, on the par with him. So I go in there and there are, you know, 25, 30 women all different types, Mm. all wearing their version of what a yoga outfit was. And went in there, read with the the casting person, and that was it. And I I remember I'd gone out to lunch with with my friend, who was the agent, and he had forgotten his phone, and he was really distracted the entire lunch. And as soon as we left, I went home. He called. He said, I've found my phone. They want you for that part. There was no callback. There was no nothing. That was it. I kind of freaked out because I think I thought I wanted to go back and and test this out. But I wasn't expecting to get anything. But it was shot in New York, and it all seemed doable. The thing that was really funny was I go to the wardrobe fitting, and the woman's pulling out all these, like, sort of beige, horrible sweatpants and... um. And I had gone there thinking, you know, Lululemon, perhaps. <laughs> how cute am I going to look? Maybe Kate Hudson's new line of yoga exactly. wear would be adorable. Like, how good am I going to look right. on this show? Not only my back, but I'm coming I'm the back yoga in a instructor. Bit, coming back in a big way. And yeah. I was like, why are you? I was like, oh, I was thinking something tighter. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're, you're an inmate. I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, no, I'm the yoga teacher. I come, I teach yoga, I leave. They're like, no, you don't leave. Like, I had not read anything. So I was under the impression I came and went. It wasn't until the wardrobe fitting that I somebody told me that I was actually in prison. (laughs) When you came on as Yoga Jones, it was terrifying. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life. First of all, I have a question. Um, It's called Orange is the New Black. But I do notice that the inmates are generally in beige. So I want to understand. Right. Well, beige looks better on people. <laughs> but, clearly, but it's not called beige is the new black. When you're so, a newbie, yes. when you first get there, you're yes. in orange. That's After how you, everyone knows. Yeah. Like, when let's you, get that girl. She's still in orange. She's the one. She's the orange girl. So, you know, you'll see when Taylor and some of the new girls come in, they're in orange. And you stay in orange. I don't even know how long. Because I, when the show started, I'd been in prison a while. So right. I was already... In beige. What is the atmosphere like on that set? Obviously. Girls high school. Is it? There it is. Is it clicky? Um, 
It is Does like... anyone sit with you during lunch? No one likes me. <laughs> no one likes me. This is sad. Well, you know ever. what? It, 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 what happens is, just like in girls' high school, you know, you've 